Okay, today we're going to continue with our argument essay and we're going to add some rhetorical tools to the introduction, the two body paragraphs, and the conclusion paragraph that we've already written and that you've typed in pages. So let's go ahead and turn to page number five. Right. And on page number five you'll find this little box with some instructions and it's really rather simplistic since we've been working with Dr. Martin Luther King's rhetorically rich pieces, you know these rhetorical tools. Plus, we've also used many of them in our um, infomercial. All right, so the actual instructions are, use two elements from each of the categories listed below in your paper. Okay, so you're going to create these rhetorical tools into your already existing paper, which might mean you already have some of them. All right. Um, and also it could mean you may need to add some of them. So you just need two elements from each of the categories. So let's look at the first category. Logical appeal. You have to add two of these elements. You need to add either a statistic as evidence, a quote by a credible source that will help substantiate your argument. You can cite the past. You can give an example of cause and effect or you can write a rhetorical question. Okay, so just two of those. Then you need to do two from the emotional appeal, vivid diction, imagery, anecdote, or alliteration. All right, so two from that category. Then two from ethical appeal. Concession refutation will count as one, or you could do appeal to your own credibility, reference to authority um, based on your audience. So if you're writing to uh, about teachers, you might want to have an authority figure example where teachers would you know find that person to be credible. In the next category you need two from this as well syntactical tools. You can include anaphora, ascendatin, polysyndeton, antithesis, parallelism, or a periodic sentence. Okay um, and then another category you need two from this one figurative language. Um, so you can choose to use a an example of personification, metaphor, extended metaphor, or simile. And then the last one you need to use two from this as well. These are some grammatical um, structures we've been working with. A positive phrase or an adverb clause, opening adjective, delayed adjective, opening adverb, or delayed adverb. So you just need two from each of these categories. Now you may have to do some review. We're tricky this way. We make you learn as you're implementing these. You will find many of these in your Birmingham jail packets uh, or your I have a dream packet or in your tools packet um, um, like your rhetorical tools packet from the infomercial power tools packet so you can use those as references it'll be a okay great now the the reason why we're making you use these rhetorical tools in your paper is just to kind of bolster your paper with some power. Um, I just think that like Dr. King, he um, he really made his, his letter better. He made his speech better by using those rhetorical tools. And I think you have noticed that and sensed, you know, that it does truly affect the reader. And so I'm wanting you to add some of these as well into your own paper. Um, the trick is though to do it kind of smoothly and fluidly where it doesn't stick out you know and like oh gosh you just use cause and effect and it doesn't even really belong there or he just used a metaphor but it really doesn't make sense so what I want you to really do is to really try to just embed these into what you've already written now you may be writing more to do this but I'm going to show you an example. I've actually already embedded many of these in my introduction paragraph. I'm going to use that as, a, as the example right now and show you what you probably need to do is just go take account for what you've already done just naturally because sometimes we use metaphors naturally or we used anaphora naturally. Now that we've heard it and sensed it, you might have liked that style and you might have just incorporated it into your paper already. So I'm going to show you an example from my, my introduction. contrast example. Um, for my one of my introduction examples. Masses of bricks and mortar and metal twist into every corner of our lives. Now just that sentence alone I have alliteration. Masses, mortar, metal. And it's it's just placed there to kind of grab your attention. So I can um, actually check off my list that I've used alliteration. And uh, that's one from that category. Then the twist into every corner of our lives is a, a metaphor. And so I can 
make a check on the list for that one as well. Now I can keep going and there are many other um, rhetorical devices in my introduction paragraph, but that's truly what you might want to do is to go ahead and read your paper and see what you've already used. And then you can kind of decide, okay, this category, I need two from this category. I haven't used any from that, from that category. And you can start placing them into your paper. Now just type them in later we will identify them. If it helps you to mark them or label them as you're going so you don't forget you've used them, go ahead and do that. You will remove those labels eventually when you turn in the final draft, but go ahead and maybe mark as you're going, maybe like in parentheses right after you add something so you don't forget you're using it. Literally the assignment, I just need you to add two rhetorical tools or syntactical tools from each of those categories and so I don't think that's going to be too difficult. I think some of you have already done that and it's kind of exciting to get to read your writing with such rich rhetorical persuasive um, structures. Okay, thank you. This is due when you come back from spring break so be sure you get this done, get it typed into your paper.